Hi, my name is Anand Venugopal, and I'm proud to be working at Databricks since November 2018. I'm the global leader for our global industry solutions practice, particularly focused on migrations. I'm here to talk to you about an exciting topic that a lot of you are involved in, are very interested in. And if you're a partner, your customers are working on this. And if you're a company or an enterprise using technology and you're thinking about this, it's modernization. Modernization of your data and analytics estate to a modern unified approach to data and AI, particularly focused on Hadoop migrations to the cloud. Let's get right into it. So the topics today are, first of all, why? I love to start with why and then go down to the what and how. So the, the how is what we end with. How can you migrate fast, low cost, and with low cost and risks? And in the middle, you'll see success stories, technical and business benefits, and what you can expect. So first of all, getting into the why. Legacy on-premise analytics architectures are simply not keeping up. Customers and enterprises across the world, across industry verticals, are focused on two or three things, especially in the day and age of COVID-19. You're all trying to reduce costs. You're all trying to get more agile in your business operations, understand customers fast, understand markets and behavior and demand forecasting, things like that really quickly, especially when changing patterns and react quickly and maximize your, maximize your, your profits, customer satisfaction and competitive advantage. Now, the third part is what you do to achieve all of that. Machine learning and AI are increasingly becoming the competitive advantage factor in becoming predictive and leaping ahead of your competition and leaping ahead of situations that might surprise you, right? And being prepared and deliver the best in the face of circumstances. Now, what has Forrester, a neutral research firm found about customers moving to Databricks? They found that 417% ROI is achieved when companies switch to Databricks. And that's coming from 47% cost savings from retiring legacy infrastructure, 5% increase in revenues. Can you imagine what that might be with the scale of hundreds of millions of billions in revenue? 25% data team productivity increase. Now, all of that put together can deliver on an average of 417% of ROI, meaning if you spend, if you spend a million on everything put together, you get back four. Uh, you 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 get back four four more in terms of value gain. So, let's look at the details. What is Hadoop constraining you from doing, and um, and why? So it is costly. Hadoop data lakes are costly, complex, and ineffective. People are really struggling with this, and I speak to customers five or ten every week. I've spoken to probably two hundred plus customers just this year alone. And people are struggling with two or three major factors. One is DevOps. 40 to 70% of data teams bandwidth are wasted by doing DevOps tasks like cluster management, hardware, software upgrades, troubleshooting, et cetera. Hadoop, the ecosystem is very complex and hard to manage. It's prone to failures. So what you end up with is a low productivity system. Second, you are stuck with rigid and inelastic infrastructure that does not scale based on the demands. So you're stuck with storage and compute that are attached to each other and are not separated. And uh, you're always paying for peak capacity. So even if you're using 30, 40% of the cluster, you have to provision for 100% um, because of those peaks. And you're paying for that 100% all the time, not just at the peaks, right? The third element is the lacking of AI capabilities. So people are increasingly looking to de deploy AI and machine learning on use cases. And increasingly they're doing it in use cases that you might not think are AI enabled. For example, marketing recommendations on you know, um, uh, upsell and cross-sells. 
one of our customers is getting about a hundred plus million dollar advantage and just because they are using now TensorFlow and AI and GPUs with Databricks on a marketing use case that is adding um, a whole percentage improvement, percentage point improvement um, in terms of their um, ROI, which is a lot of money when you look at the billion dollar scale. So on productivity and cost and innovation, you're constrained with Hadoop data lakes. What do you need to surpass all of these and move to the future? You need a modern data analytics architecture, which scales and performs very cost effectively at scale on the cloud. It's easy to manage and highly reliable for diverse data sets. It delivers predictive and real-time insights to drive all of your innovative use cases. So what are we talking about here? How does it look? It has three elements with regard to Databricks. Delta Lake brings you the productivity gain from the DevOps intensive, unreliable data lakes that you had with Hadoop. Instead, you now have an elastic storage layer that is low cost. And on top of that, you got Delta Lake. And that gives you a, a transaction layer on top of your data that delivers asset compliance, that delivers the ability to delete data, uh, doing upsurts, et cetera. You, you can go to a single data point and delete it, be compliant with CCPA and GDPR, et cetera. Something that you could never do with a Hadoop-based data lake, right? You have auto compaction. Um, you have schema enforcement. You got a number of those benefits that make the data lake reliable and high performance with Delta Lake. Second part, you get on-demand elastic auto-scale clusters with optimized high-performance tuned Apache Spark under the Databricks runtime engine. We invented Apache Spark as a company. Our founders invented Apache Spark and all our solution experts and engineers know Apache Spark very well. So we've tuned Apache Spark um, and made it a very, very high-performance engine under the Databricks runtime on the, on the cloud. So that gives you the massive scale and cost advantage, cost performance advantage on the cloud, right? Third element is that we've built in all of the AI frameworks very elegantly and smoothly into one package that you're using one notebook interface with your, your favorite programming language, uh, Scala or Python, whatever it may be, you can now attach to different clusters and in a single interface, in a single developer experience, you can do big data processing and AI processing based on one notebook and you can deploy different hardware types for different jobs. And you can access both big data and, and AI paradigms in, in a single interface. You don't need to move data back and forth across different clusters like many of you are doing with Hadoop on one side and then high performance computing and HPC GPU clusters on the other, especially on premises, right? So on productivity, cost and innovation, these are our advantages that we deliver on top of Hadoop or as against Hadoop, right? Now, how does this architecture look when it's all layered together? This is, this is what it is. And you probably see this, you've seen this in many presentations so far um, with regard to Databricks. And uh, this is how it's laid out. The data lake layer, which is, could be an AWS S3 or ADLS Gen 2 on Azure, et cetera, is the low cost uh, storage layer that's elastic and uh, on the cloud. On top of that, you got the structured transaction layer, like I told you before about Delta Lake, right? And gives you a parquet structure, data, data format, gives you a transaction log, gives you those advantages of being asset compliant, gives you, you know, being able to delete single piece of data, schema enforcement. So reliability and performance guaranteed on a variety of your data sets. Streaming, batch, all agnostic, right? You can literally stream and or uh, do batch processing on any kind of data sets. And then you got the high performance query engine. That's one of our latest innovations with a vectorized uh, engine called Photon redone in C++, delivering amazingly high performance compared to um, what even you know, uh, the previous generation of SQL based access on Databricks used to be able to give you. And using and against as against um, 
other uh, SQL based frameworks on the cloud comparable, we, we outperform them. And the resultant factor is that you got one platform for every use case. Look at those use cases on top, streaming analytics, BI, data science, machine learning, all of those use cases on your and all of your data in one platform. That's what Databricks gives you. And that is simply un, you know, uh, impossible to achieve uh, with, without a lot of difficulty and cost um, in, in Hadoop. Now, let's look at who is delivering, who is actually doing this and getting these benefits, right? Um, customers across the board, across industry verticals, as you can see here, internet-based companies, pharma, uh, media companies, telco, retail, telecommunications, all of these giants have actually done a variety of different use cases, personalization, demand forecasting, inventory management, image processing, uh, network analytics, et cetera. All of that, what used to be highly inefficient and probably in some cases not possible to do on Hadoop is now possible at scale delivering extreme performance and efficiencies on Databricks on the cloud. One awesome example that I am, uh, that it's my favorite is um, how T-Mobile transformed a very important use case that was material to their business. It was called PCMD or network measurement data. The interaction between the mobile and the network has a lot of intelligence built into it. Why do calls fail? Where are customers roaming? Um, how is the network behaving in different locations at different points in a cell? Things like that. And uh, this is critical to their business. This is critical to maintaining customer satisfaction, protecting churn, and delivering, delivering network efficiencies. Now, what did T-Mobile do? They were using a Hadoop cluster, and uh, it was a Hortonworks cluster, 1,600 nodes. And they were running a high on test job. And this particular job was to take 47 minutes, 15,000 cores, used to use 15,000 compute cores for 47 long minutes. And when we went in, looked at the code, refactored it, transformed it, after a 12 week project, we tested it out, put it into production, and it gave 35 minutes, 256 cores performance, meaning the whole job was done in 35 minutes using 256 cores, as opposed to 15,000 cores, 47 minutes. That was a 78.5X gain. And this was data coming in at 2 million records per second, 375 GB per batch, 23 terabytes per day, critical business critical information. And we were able to deliver real-time insights, hourly dashboards that a management team really wanted to see. So it was an amazing example of a holistic transformation where we went in, took a Hadoop cluster, a uh, data a use case running on a Hadoop cluster, transform the code, refactor it to make to make it to make it leverage the efficiencies that are inherent in Databricks and transform the future. Many other customers are seeing very similar benefits. H and M, supply chain decisions, applying machine learning to store data five thousand plus stores with a 70% reduction in operational costs. Record and Bankesser, 500,000 store data, two terabytes, 250 pipelines, demand forecasting use case, with a 10X more capacity in data processing and 2X faster data pipelines, right? Sam's Club, part of Walmart group, important use case, predicting bakery food spoilage. $100 million in fresh food spoilage saved because of the better data processing they did. They used to do with 10 plus large Hadoop clusters. Now they're doing it with Databricks, $900,000 cost savings. The job processing saved from, or reduced from seven hours to 40 minutes. Viacom 18, very similar results. They could not process the 90 days of data with the large Hadoop cluster. Today, they have a 26% increase in productivity of their data science and data engineering teams with more data being able to be crunched at lower cost with much lower DevOps burden. And these are examples of technical and business benefits that customers are seeing. And there are many, many other stories like this that I could tell you. Uh, and you'll find more about, uh, about all of this in our website. Uh, databricks.com slash migration also has uh, some of these stories. 
So now let's look at the pattern of um, business benefits that I just talked to you about, right? So Databricks delivers business value at three levels. One is the infrastructure savings that I referred to here, which is the cost and performance increase when you use Databricks instead of something like Hadoop. You save a lot of resources. You get done much more with lesser hardware and in lesser time. Second is productivity where your data scientists and data engineers are literally eliminating 30, 40% of their overhead jobs that they used to do with a lot of time saved to focus on business impacting use cases. And three, business impacting use cases themselves, things that you could not do with Hadoop. Our, the, the marketing analytics use case that I talked about with one, one particular customer simply added $100 million in value, $100 plus million in value because it really impacted uh, two or three percentage points increase in their ROI. And at hundreds of millions of dollars of scale, um, that does become a lot. And as you can see, it's $1, $2, $3. And it's basically a zero added each time. It's an order of magnitude increase in value um, with, all of those, with all those steps. The first two, infrastructure and productivity gain is like the most obvious thing that we're all very focused on op, you know, often, which is infrastructure um, and productivity. The third is the business impacting use cases, right? So let me tell you a little bit about that first two layers and how it works. So here's a case where in a real customer with 156 nodes uh, have Purdue, they saved net gain in value with Databricks was 12.8 million. And that bottom red line going downwards is over 12 quarters, how much they would have spent with um, Cloudera in our analysis with them, right? 18.7 million and the same job could be achieved. We forecasted, we did the complete analysis of the workload and, and forecasting of the what, what Databricks can do and based on our POCs, et cetera, on the same data, same use cases. And we, and we did this in $4.9 million um, cost, meaning 18.7 minus 4.14.9 is 13.8 is the potential value in savings. And that's the top number. Now, because you have to run both of these technologies in parallel for some time, maybe a quarter or a little bit more, then you, you're paying for both technologies and you're paying for the migration cost itself. And that all of that reduces the top possible number of 13.8 by one more million in net impact of savings and uh, business value is 12.8 million, right? So what would have been an $18.7 million spend became a $4.9 million spend with $1 million overhead, thereby saving 12.8 million. Now, the components were avoided licensing costs of Hadoop. Um, no need to add expensive new hardware for additional capacity because each time you have to increase new hardware to, to take care of the data growth. Avoided data center costs, avoided Hadoop administration costs. All of these components go into this cost savings. And we can compute for you, for your use case, something very specific like this by asking you some very basic questions how many nodes in your Hadoop cluster? How many people supporting the environment? What is your data growth rate? When is your renewal, et cetera? Using just those three or four data points, we can actually compute the approximate value gain that you will have with Databricks. And then when we go into a deeper engagement, deeper interviews, et cetera, we can validate some of these things and fine tune them as part of your engagement with Databricks. Now, coming to the how part, right? Coming, which is, which is very important for many of you, um, when we look at a migration from Hadoop to Databricks, there are four different components that you see on the left side. Data, data and metadata, workloads and jobs, which is actually the code that's running on your Hadoop cluster and how it moves to, to the cloud. The security and governance model, some of you might have, you know, uh, send, might have Ranger, some of you might have implemented different levels of permission, security, et cetera, on your data. We care about all of that. We need to care about all of that being transported into the cloud and having equally better uh, security and governance structure in the cloud. And other tools and integrations around your cluster. What is bringing data into it? How is it being consumed by users? All of that becomes very important. And these are pillars of our migration. And what we do is we have an expert team. These guys have Hadoop expertise because they worked in, uh, 
either Cloudera or Hortonworks before. They know, they really know Hadoop very well. And they now work for Databricks, so they have expertise in the cloud side and they, how Databricks works so they can bridge both the worlds. And that's the Databricks expert team together with our system integrator partners or solution um, providers and our uh, software product partners, we bring all of these together and deliver the migration in a very low risk, low cost manner to you. And as I mentioned before, lift and shift options or complete code transformation options are both available in our migration practice. Now, when you do the lift and shift, uh, that is faster and that's automatable. And when you do a transformative change of code refactoring and looking at the code and rechanging and, and maybe recoding some parts of it or so, all of it, uh, that could be a tremendous gain. It might take a little longer, but in, even in the even in, in some really complex cases, we've done it in 12 weeks. Now, the automated portion, I think I'm very, very excited about this. Um, we now have an ability to move Hive and Spark workloads predominantly in an automated way from Hadoop to Databricks. We're, um, we have a tool that we bring to you as part of the project um, and it can do an automated assessment first of all in telling you how much can be automated. It analyzes, it connects to your meta store, it connects to your scripts, looks at the code, does, look, does analysis of uh, what can be transformed, what can be fixed, uh, et cetera. And it does an automated assessment and then also the migration itself is automated. So for most workload types, the migration can be automated. And the kind of impact that we have in this migration, automated migration capability is that a 17 to 20 week project can now be compressed into eight weeks. And this is from a specific case. So typically we're seeing petabytes of data to move and you know 3000 jobs. This is an example, specific example that we got um, with a mixed workload types considered. So you get 55 to 66 percent in costs and two to three x reduction in your timelines when we take when we use the migration automation approach for Hadoop migration to Databricks, and uh, Databricks uh, professional services team with our partners brings you this ability. Our partner ecosystem is extremely rich. As I mentioned, we got software product vendors, we got tool vendors, we got uh, solution providers and services providers, consulting uh, players, and we got our cloud partners. Together with all of these, Databricks teams together and brings you a low risk, low cost, pretty quick migration compared to purely manual approaches. Now, how does this, how does this work? We start with a very tailored Hadoop migration assessment which is very tuned to your environment. We realize that all Hadoop clusters are not the same. Some people have different components. Some people have different use cases. Some people have a lot of different use, uh, users, different types of users, et cetera. So we take into account various specifics with regard to your environment, provide you a questionnaire to answer first. And then we do a discovery and education workshop that are led by our expert team. We educate you and learn about your workloads. It's both technical and use case and business value analysis, all are considered here. And then we recommend a current future state architecture transition. We talk about use cases and prioritizations and we understand your three-year roadmap and we give you a specific proposal and recommendations all for free. There's no cost of this. And, uh, and we will summarize that whole thing in a, in a presentation to you. And this takes about two to six sessions of uh, 90 minutes each and we've done it in as low as two sessions. We've been in some cases we've taken four to six sessions, but all e-workshops and it's led by some real, real experts. As I mentioned before, these guys know Hadoop. They know Databricks and cloud. They can bridge the two worlds. Highly reliable team. I work with these guys every week and they are serious experts. So in summary, your migration from Hadoop to Databricks is possible. It's possible fast. It's possible with low cost and low complexity and low risk. We can get it done. There is tremendous business impact that you can get immediately by doing this migration. Your competitors and market leaders are doing it right now as we speak. And we are looking forward to engaging with you to make your migration successful and start immediately. Okay. 
Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time. Visit databricks.com slash migration and write to us to start your migration assessment ASAP. Thank you.